Hello, my name is Fanny and I'm the face behind Spodas and Podas. I've actually received a lot of questions about the species I own and whether I can make some kind of uh, care videos for each and every one of them, which is something I'm planning to do and I really want to get into. Uh, much of the general care for isopods is pretty much the same over all species. So to begin with, I want to start off with a general care video. Before we start the video, I'm just going to add a little disclaimer. Uh, I've been keeping isopods for quite some time. I have over 80 species of isopods and different color morphs that I collected over the years. Uh, I've had really thriving colonies and I've had colonies that totally crashed for me. I spent so much time researching, trying out, putting so much effort into finding the best care for these animals that I can possibly give them. Uh, my way might not be the way for everyone and uh, if you have a way that works for you then good for you as long as the animals are happy and thriving so this video is gonna be from my perspective and what I do to give the best care for my isopods so let's start with the enclosure isopods don't have high demands regarding what type of enclosure in which you house them in I mainly keep mine in plastic boxes because they are easy to obtain, cheap and highly adaptable. However, a terrarium or an old aquarium works just fine. Some kind of ventilation is necessary for the enclosure to provide proper air circulation. I usually drill a sufficient number of holes on the sides and in the lid of the container, taking into account the specific species ventilation requirements. A newly started colony usually consists of around 8-12 to animals. Uh, when I get them, I usually start them off in a smaller box, around 1.5 to maybe 3 liter. The reason for that is that they seem to establish more quickly and start producing manka when they are in a smaller space. You can start off with a large enclosure in the beginning, but in my experience it may take longer for the colony to establish itself. Moving on, let's talk about substrate. As you probably already know, isopods are detritivores which means they mainly feed on decaying organic leaf matter. To provide them with good, nutrient-rich substrate is essential for a thriving colony. There are many ways to mix your own substrate, and if you don't feel comfortable doing it yourself, many breeders sell their own mixes. For many years, I have experimented with my own substrate mixes and have found one that works very well for me. The core of my substrate consists of equal parts of natural potting soil, cocoa fiber, along with rotten white wood from various types of trees. To incorporate minerals, I add sand and calcium carbonate. I also add items that can be found in a leaf forest, such as branches and twigs. Finally, I crumble down leaf litter from different types of trees and mix everything together. When it comes to creating a good living space in the enclosure for the isopods, providing hiding places and lots of food sources can be very beneficial. Many people use cork bark as a standard for creating hiding places, and it works well and it offers good hiding places for isopods. However, I prefer to collect bark from leaf trees outside, such as oak and alder trees, which can offer both hiding places and nutritious food for animals. Additionally, bark and twigs with moss or lichen growing on it can be especially appealing to the isopods. It's essential to provide a good layer of nutritious leaf litter that covers the enclosure's floor. I use a mixture that includes both hard and soft types of leaves, such as maple, birch, apple and willow. I believe this mix provides something for all types of isopods. I typically divide my enclosure into a dry and moist side where the moist side should have a hydrant station made of sphagnum and forest moss. The size of the moist side is adjusted based on the species living in there. One thing that is often discussed is disinfecting the substrate, the leaf litter, the bark and all the other decorations that go in. However, I don't do this at all. I collect these items from the nature and put them direct into the enclosures. At most, I might rinse them off to get rid of ants and such, but that's rare. Uh, at least in Sweden, we don't have anything harmful to the isopods, 
when cooking or preparing the leaf litter and such, you lose so many different types of fungi, microorganisms and nutrients that the isopod thrive on. And I don't believe any supplements can replace that. For that reason, I don't disinfect the things I put in the isopods enclosures. So, let's talk about food. While isopods primarily consume decaying plant material, they are opportunistic feeders and will also consume living plants, algae and fungi in the nature. I give my isopods a wide variety of food in addition to what they can find in the enclosure. So, about once a week I give them organic veggies that I rinse off thoroughly. I mainly give zucchini, carrots and sweet potatoes because they love them and they can stay in the enclosure longer without molding. This is especially helpful when you have a lot of enclosures to take care of. Protein. I give my isopods some type of protein one to three times a week, depending on the species. For example, smaller Amadelidian species get protein once a week, while the larger Spanish Pozzelio get it three times a week. I usually give high protein fish pellets or dried mealworms, but they also sometimes get fresh fish, pinkies, roaches and snails as a treat, when available. Supplements. The free supplements I give them are calcium, minerals and algae tablets. Although there is calcium in the substrate, I also give calcium supplements. I use calcium carbonate made from stone floor, which, which I buy in 10 kilo bags and give in powder form about once a month. I also mix in multimineral for reptiles every two months. Finally, they also get spirulina and algae tablets every two weeks. At last, the maintenance. Isopods are generally low maintenance animals and actually seem to thrive when left alone. It takes time is feeding them. And when I do that, I often take the opportunity to miss their enclosure as well. It takes about three hours a week to maintain it. About once a month I add leaf litter and replace branches with new ones that have lichen on. And about once a year I take the opportunity to change substrate for them. In all my enclosures I also have a cleanup crew, which is springtails. They eat leftover food, keep the mold away and outcompete any pests, such as grain mites, for example. I use tropical white, Folsomia candida and orange springtails. A springtail surely is the best friend of an isopod keeper. And with that said, this video is done. Keeping isopod isn't that hard and this is my general care sheet for them. I hope you liked this video, give it a thumbs up, comment something, maybe subscribe to my channel and, and hopefully I will be able to make more videos like this more specific to species in the future. Thanks everyone, I'll see you again!